between Europe and Asia, economic dialogue, humanitarian missions, multi-vector operating and the search for compromises in the world arena. How else does Kazakhstan participate in the development of the modern world? More details, watch the program Kazakhstan International Vectors. Today you will find out how unique is the work of a veterinarian, when did the first animal protection laws appear and how biodiversity is being preserved in Kazakhstan. Position of non-violence towards animals existed in ancient times. One of its supporters, the great Indian Emperor Ashoka, was the first who introduced a ban on ritual sacrifice of animals. Thinkers and philosophers such as Seneca, Horace and Pythagoras spoke about the need for the respect for animals and the undesirability of cruelty towards them. The first laws for the protection of animals in the English-speaking world were adopted in Ireland in 1635. They forbade pulling wool from the ship and fastening the plough to the tails of horses, as this makes them suffering. In 1822, the Martins Law was passed in England on the treatment of horses and cattle. It received royal sanction and became the first of the known laws in defense of animals. Galina Leonova holds a degree in nursery. At the end of her studies, she settled down to work in a dental clinic and even could not think that someday she would devote her entire life to animals. By a twist of fate, once my dog was hit by a car, I have immediately taken her to the veterinary clinic called Sunshine. It took me half a year of working there to decide that my vocation is to cure animals and help them to save their lives. Because to some extent they are more grateful than people. You will never forget this look when the animal seems to be aggressive at first, but it still allows you to do everything because understands that you are helping him or her, that after that everything will be good. Galina has been working as a veterinary therapist for eight years already. However, during this time she has managed to learn to perform simple surgical operations. So now she saves even more lives. Galina jokes that the animal patients are more memorable to her than their human owners. I remember them all because an animal that has long been on a treatment and survives in spite of everything, you remember it, in fact, and even remember more than the owners. And when they come and you see them with their cat, you say, oh, hello, Bagheera, and what about the owners? You do not even remember the faces. Galina says that the infinite love to animals is an essential condition for any veterinarian. This work is quite specific and can be unpredictable from time to time. You have to be prepared for everything. For example, when this cat entered the clinic in a critical condition, there were practically no chances of rescuing her. You see, she had drains here and now she has stitches. In spite of everything, the cat makes a progress. You know, with the indications of life which she had when she was admitted to our clinic, she should have died. Her health condition was not comparable to life. She had a better chance of dying, but apparently the cat really has nine lives. It also happens that stray animals get here, or the owners do not want to pay for an expensive treatment of their pets and simply forget to take them back home. This is actually how an animal appears to live on the street. This dog was found on the street. At least we were told that everything happened like this. People asked us to keep the dog, so she stayed with us. She is looking for the owners now. She has an old fracture on the pad, in principle with which nothing has to be done. A pet is not a toy, says Galina. A pet may need expensive food and vitamins, veterinary services and much more. And if you are morally and financially not ready for this, the animal falls under the risk of becoming homeless. It often happens that a person brings an animal at home. This animal scratches the sofa and the owner simply throws it out to the street just because the sofa was scratched. That is why, when taking an animal, we must understand all this. We must understand our responsibility. Protection of animals is a type of activity aimed at improving the maintenance and handling of animals and preventing ill treatment with them. Much attention to this issue is paid by the Republic of Kazakhstan. Including the year 2014, there was the Jasil Damu state program operating in Kazakhstan. It provided for the concrete steps, deadlines, responsibilities for various aspects of conservation of biodiversity. This actually is the animal world, the plant world, forestry, fish farming, etc. 
In general, everything that concerns this sphere. In 2014, Jassot Damu program was over. A special committee has been set up under the Ministry of Agriculture of Kazakhstan. This department is responsible for the control and supervision in the field of forestry, protection, reproduction and use of wildlife and specially protected natural areas. It is also involved in the implementation of certain projects. Among the separate tasks, there is, for example, the SAIGA protection program. Money is allocated annually for registration, monitoring and protection of these animals. The protection is provided by the hunting grounds and territorial inspection of forestry of the animal world. But a specialized service is performed only by the hunting industry. Funds are also allocated for the protection and monitoring of rare artiodactyls. These are gazelles, kulans, bukhara deer and agali. Public associations and special animal shelters are also working in Kazakhstan. They are engaged mainly in saving of stray animals. They advocate humane treatment of them and even try to find new owners. When given the animal to new owners, we inevitably check the conditions of keeping in which the animal will live and we give it only under the guardianship agreement. We, as former owners and the new owner, confirm that he or she is ready to take responsibility for the animal. Stray animals sometimes create a threat to humans. They can not only frighten, bite or scratch someone, they're also the carriers of various diseases. Experts say that the most humane way of combating stray animals' population growth is sterilization. Thanks to the efforts of animal rights activists, now there is a state program of preferential sterilization of animals in Kazakhstan. It was a huge step, a huge breakthrough for Kazakhstan, for Almaty, and thanks to our solidarity in this group called the Good City Project, we have achieved this serious step to which we have been going for a long time. Also, with other animal advocates and volunteers of different groups in Almaty, an exhibition was held not so long ago, during which many animals have found their new homes. It was held in the park. All shelters, volunteers who have animals brought them to the park and everyone could take them from there to have a pet. This is also a very big good action. It showed that animals should not always be bought for money. They can always be taken in a shelter. In the future, plans of animal advocates in Kazakhstan to change the rules for keeping and catching of stray dogs. Within the framework of the Good City project, a special document is already being prepared. It would increase the responsibility of owners and protect animals, taking into account the opinion of all specialists in the field of keeping and training, as well as opinion of dog breeders and veterinarians. Apart from that, such associations in different cities of Kazakhstan are engaged in education activity. We have friendly foundations in Russia that help us. We are provided with the necessary materials from them, which we use in the future under the realities of Kazakhstan, to teach children how to properly treat animals, to teach adults how to properly treat animals and how to properly educate children to treat animals. Well, these are some humane things that we want to take root in Kazakhstan. There are also organizations from Ukraine and from Uzbekistan who have good experience in conducting various humane programs. Program. The Association for the Conservation of Biodiversity of Kazakhstan is also carrying out significant work on animal safety and security. It cooperates with various international partners in a number of areas. Our Kazakhstani Association for the Conservation of Biodiversity works on a number of international projects. These are projects with the Frankfurt Zoological Society, with the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. These are all projects for the conservation of the Saiga too, for the conservation of steppe ecosystems. Now there is a small but very interesting project in cooperation with the Customs Service of Kazakhstan on the training of dogs of the Customs Service and a couple of dog border guards to search for Saiga horns. A year ago, the association has performed an unprecedented work of returning animals to their homeland, which have been illegally trafficked across the border. Poachers trying to take out 8,000 turtles from Kazakhstan were detained by Russian services. 
The main problem was that they had to be returned to Kazakhstan. The problem was actually that before that, nothing from living objects had ever been returned to Kazakhstan. That is, there were no such precedents. The mechanism of interaction of these services was not adjusted. Somehow it happened that we coordinated this work, I was doing it, meeting the interests of the Russian border guards, the police, our forestry committee of the animal world, somehow helping to exchange information in an accelerated order, so we could agree. Two years ago, the Kazakhstani Association for the Conservation of Biodiversity was the first in the region of Central Asia and the Caucasus to become a partner of the BirdLife International. In each country, this organization can have only one partner, and it is always a carefully selected membership organization. We work with BirdLife International. Together with them, we have conducted a program on key ornithological territories. In Kazakhstan, the most important areas for bird conservation have been identified. There are 127 of them. The total area of these sites is more than 15 million hectares. And also key ornithological concepts have been included in the law, which now is called the Law on Specially Protected Natural Territories. There are a number of international documents in the world that regulates the protection of wildlife. And the very first such agreement is the Convention on Biological Diversity. One of its main requirements for the 193 signatory countries is the creation of national strategies for the conservation of biological diversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity is an international agreement adopted in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. It provides for both the conservation of components of biological diversity outside their habitats and the maintenance and restoration of viable populations of species in their natural environment. The overall objective of the Convention is to stimulate activities leading to a sustainable future. According to the Convention, all life forms on the Earth, including ecosystems, animals, plants, fungi and microorganisms, are the components of biodiversity. They should be used for the benefit of humanity, but so that it does not lead to the depletion of biodiversity. In 2010, the Convention adopted the protocol on the access to genetic resources and their sharing through fair and equitable benefits. And in 2015, the President Nazarbayev signed a decree on Kazakhstan's accession to it. The next is the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species, which is also known as the Bonn Convention. It was created in order for states to cooperate with each other to preserve a certain species. That is, the state cannot save migrating species alone. For example, we guard some birds ourselves. They might fly away somewhere, to Russia or to China or somewhere else. There, they are being boundlessly destroyed. On the contrary, they preserve and we destroy. Another international governmental agreement cites regulates the international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora, as well as their international movement through permits and certificates. It is one of the largest agreements for the protection of wildlife. Although compliance with sites is mandatory for all participating states, special national laws are not required. The document provides for the creation of a department for compliance with regulations, a legislative ban on the trade in rare animals, the establishment of a system of fines and the possibility of confiscating the prohibited goods in each participating country. This convention regulates the movement of samples across borders. Why is it necessary? Because the main driver for poaching is buying something abroad. If we stop the possibility of export, and most importantly stop the possibility of buying there, at that end, then there will be no poaching, there will be nothing. Approximately 5,000 species of animals and 28,000 plant species are protected by sites. The convention contains annexes where endangered species are grouped according to the degree of threat of their extinction. In some cases, the appendix of the convention does not include the entire species, but only a subspecies or population inhabiting the territory of a particular country. For example, elephants in South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Namibia. By that, people successfully fought with the extraction of elephant tusks in Africa. 
when Europe completely closed, creating this convention sites. In Europe, the illegal trade in tusks and everything that is done of them has been completely closed. That is, this sites convention regulates it. It does not completely block the entry, it regulates the order. That is, entry is done only by special permits, all samples are registered. That is, everything is put under control. In addition to legal documents, there are also international and public organizations and movements that advocate the conservation of biodiversity. The largest of these is the World Wildlife Fund, with more than 5 million supporters around the world, operating in more than 100 countries and supporting around 1,500 conservation initiatives. There is a World Wildlife Fund in Kazakhstan, but there is no permanent representation. One person works with the fund. They carried out projects on the Bukhara deer on their reintroduction to the Sirdarya region. While it was mostly Bukhara deer, they also supported the creation of the Turkestan National Park, helped to prepare a justification and supported a promising program for the reintroduction of the tiger in the Ili River Delta. The Humane Society of the United States is the world's largest animal welfare organization, which according to the Washington Post has 8 million members. Another organization, the World Society for the Protection of Animals, unites 900 societies that defend animals in 150 countries. It should be noted that it includes both organizations that share the concept of animal welfare as well as people fighting for animal rights. The World Animal Protection is both fighting against cruel treatment of animals in general and is conducting separate campaigns against specific types of cruel and inhuman treatment. For example, bullfighting, bear baiting, whaling, maintenance of dolphins in captivity and intensive livestock. World Animal Protection Day is an international day designed to draw the attention of humanity to the problems of other inhabitants of the planet Earth. This date is celebrated annually on the 4th of October. It was decided to celebrate it back in 1931 in Florence at an international congress of supporters of the movement for the protection of animals. The idea of holding such a day has taken root around the world and in 2008 various events dedicated to this date were held already in 68 countries of the world. Blood tests, dermatological examinations, surgical operations. This is only part of the services provided in this veterinary clinic today. And if the tests still have to be sent to research partners, yet there is no laboratory, then the ultrasound room here is fully equipped. This simplifies the work of veterinarians. In the future, we plan to open an X-ray room for better assistance to pets, so that we won't send them somewhere on the X-ray, but we will be able to do everything in one and the same place. Of course, the owners should ensure the safety of their pets, says Galina, and the first thing they can do is to vaccinate them in time. The most important thing is to follow the vaccination plan. The first vaccination takes place in 8 or 9 weeks, the second at 12 weeks, the next one comes in the age of 6 months of an animal, and then the annual vaccine. The protection of animals today is provided by both states at the national level and organizations at the international level. Experts do not deny that significant investments are needed to conserve biodiversity, but this will bring significant environmental, economic and social benefits in return. There are measures that do not require large financial costs, which can be taken by every person. Do not pass by violation of environmental legislation. That is, try to report either to the environmental police or to the wildlife protection structures, to the same territorial inspectorates. Do not participate. Do not buy poaching products, for example the saiga meat. Do not buy illegally extracted sturgeon meat or the meat of a roe deer and so on. If this is an owner's animal, then the care in all respects is necessary, such as food, veterinary inspection and walks under proper control. If we are talking about a homeless animal, it is necessary to try, if it is not aggressive of course, it is necessary to try to help him. 
Today, organizations advocating animal welfare are campaigning to adopt the UN Universal Declaration on Animal Welfare. This document calls on the United Nations to recognize animals as living beings capable of experiencing pain and suffering, and to recognize that animal welfare is an important issue within the social development of the countries of the world.